I was the pastor of Central Church when it happened. Our church was the victim of a child predator. We all trusted him. He was a Sunday school teacher. And all the parents loved him. But at a Sunday school party, he established a relationship with a young boy, David. And that led to a series of encounters in which the abuse took place. Over the months and years after the abuse came to light, our church was nearly bankrupted by legal costs. My elders were exhausted. Tom, the chairman, counted 50 extra meetings in the first six months. Well, there was no energy for anything else. No creativity, no new ministry. We could barely keep our heads above water. Our church was dishonored in the community. Though the negative press died out over time, people would still respond to our church members. Oh, you go to Central Church. Isn't that where the child got molested? Attendance plummeted, morale suffered. Only after a name change and a location change years later did our church finally begin to recover. But what happened to us was not the worst. It was my son that was molested. Our pastor called the Monday after Halloween to tell us that he had something extremely urgent to talk with us about. We just panicked. He wouldn't tell us what it was about over the phone. He said we had to come to the church. He and the youth pastor met us in his office. I can still hear the words he used to tell us that our beautiful 12-year-old son David had been abused and had told the youth pastor Words cannot describe the feeling of hurt and betrayal. That Sunday school teacher, I trusted him. Sometimes the anger and fury would boil up to the point where I just secretly wanted to kill him. I can't even speak his name. all innocent. We didn't do anything to deserve this. All this pain was the result of the selfish, sinful, uncontrolled lust of one person. What happened to us wasn't the worst. I knew from the moment my Sunday school teacher began to rub my neck that something was wrong. But I was just so afraid. After it all happened, I never went back to Sunday school again. I did attend regular church services, but I never allowed myself to be alone with a grown man ever again. In fact, I pretty much avoided all Bible teachers from that point on. And after a few months, I got my parents to go to a new church because I just couldn't stand to be near that classroom anymore. When I was 16, though, I just quit going to church. I regularly attended counseling. But even at the age of 20, the wounds from that trauma still remained open. At 22, I married. But uh, to be transparent, the sexual part of our relationship was very difficult. Sex, to me, was dirty. And I struggled to have a normal relationship with my wife. People complain that I'm overprotective of my kids. Maybe I am. I just don't trust anybody else to care for them. I've even refused to allow babysitters to take care of them. My wife doesn't like that very much, which puts a further strain on our marriage. It's been nearly 20 years, and I'm still affected by this terrible thing. But what happened to me wasn't the worst. You don't know me. I'm just somebody in the community, maybe even a distant relative. You just don't know. You haven't ever thought of me. But I didn't hear about Christ. Maybe it was because the families at Central Church were afraid to invite neighborhood kids. Maybe it's because the church leaders were too overwhelmed to reach out. Or was it because I'd heard about what happened at Central Church, and it only affirmed what I thought about Christians. They were all just a bunch of hypocrites. 
but now I'm gone. You know, dead. Now I know the truth about Christ and about hell. I know you all feel so bad about David and what happened to him. And I don't blame you. It was awful. I saw you cry. His pain was real, and I know you could feel it. I just heard him tell you it's affected him for 20 years. But my pain is longer than a lifetime. It's for eternity. Will you cry for me too? I don't mean to sound selfish or inconsiderate, but what about me? Do you care? Isn't the harm that came to me worse? At least David can have hope things will get better. I'm facing forever with no hope. There are other you don't know me's out there. That's right. You don't know them. But please, I beg you, do all that you can to keep David's situation from happening in your church because it may affect a you don't know me. Don't just think of what it could do to David and his family or to your church. Please remember to keep in mind what it could do to the you don't know me's. I'm not asking you to care less about David. I'm asking you to care more for me and others like me. Won't you? Please. <laughs>